All right, cool. All right, guys, we got Ken back here for a follow-up appointment. We saw Ken uh, a couple, about a month ago on a previous video. Uh, you guys are going to see his uh, treatment today. We're going to go through, we've got some arthritis definitely over on the right side of the neck. We feel uh, some bony growth back here on the right cervical spine. So we're going to do some muscle work uh, with our hands, a little bit of manual therapy as it's called. We're going to use the Hypervolt just to create uh, some good movement up in the shoulders today. And then we're going to do some fascial treatment, some myofascial treatment down into the arms, maybe into the legs. We'll see how things feel down there today. And then we'll talk about uh, one to two exercises that we want Ken to work on while he's outside the office so he can continue to progress with good movement, good health, good mobility. Um, Ken, you said you are working out on a daily basis? Yes. Yeah. Staying pretty healthy, right? Just don't try and stay healthy yet. Try and keep moving. Keep moving. Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Oh, I love it. Love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Now it's been part of your life, your whole life pretty much. Yes, correct. Yeah. And we talked on his first video, he was a, a D1 athlete or yeah. what? Yeah. Yeah. And what again? Wrestling? And wrestling, yes. Nice. So this guy has had a long, healthy athletic career. And he's now staying in shape for what reasons? Yeah, being a grandparent and being a grandparent. Wanna wanna be active through the sixties and seventies. And eighties and nineties. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Don't stop, don't stop, yeah. don't stop. Gotta keep moving people. So many people come in here, they say, I retired this year and I'm like, What do you like to do? Well, nothing. I like to watch TV. I worked my whole life. I want to relax now. Well, no, you can't do that. You have to stay mobile and active. And some people come in here and they say, I retired this month or this year and I'm exercising every day and it's good for me. And maybe I didn't have time to do it when I was working full time and now I'm making it a point to do it. And other people like Ken come in who's had a long, healthy athletic career. Uh, you guys have seen on his first appointment, he's got definitely some injuries that we're working through multiple surgeries throughout the body uh, that we've, you know, we're working on some of the fibrous tissue that has developed. At one point in Ken's life, he had a, you know, probably a pretty nasty neck injury because he's got a, some irritation right down here in his C6, uh, C5, C6, C7 region. Look down for me, buddy. Uh, but uh, yeah, everybody has a different story of their exercise habits. And when you're a patient here in our office, many people, do exercise and many people don't exercise but I do stress the importance of daily movement with 100% of the people I get to interact with because it is something that will keep you mobile keep you uh, moving later into life which is so important uh, when when or if you do get to have uh, children or grandchildren uh, you know you want to be or try to be as active as they are because those little buggers move fast <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> they, they pick it up, right? So we've got to, we've got to do exercises, we've got to do stretches, we need to get in tune with our body. You guys hear me say that a lot. You've got to learn how to uh, stand correctly, stretch correctly, and kind of take care of your aches and pains when you're not in the office by doing gentle mobility exercises. And you guys will get to see how we coach Ken through some of those exercises today. Look down for me, look up, look down. Look up, look down, look up, look down, look up, look down, and then we're going to go to the left. Look up, look down, look up, look down, look up, look down. And as we do with every patient here in the office, we treat the cervical spine musculature because it is so important and it does get you know, pretty knotted up and pretty tense from day-to-day -day life, day-to-day -day stress, the way that we sleep, the way that we hold our body or we hold our posture throughout the day. Um, and so it is common to develop neck strain. And Ken, actually, you feel a lot better than you did last appointment, my man. Look yeah, down good. for me. Look up. Look down for me, good. All right, back to neutral. Now we're gonna work left side, okay? Look down. Look up. Look down, look up, look down, look up, look down, look up, look down, look up, look down, look up. You here? Huh, I just finished. Can you stick around for a little bit? Yeah. All right, cool. I gotta go to jujitsu and do that. I got a couple minutes. I'm gonna work on this on Ken here and then we'll get you adjusted if that's cool. Yeah, hell yeah. Cool. Down. 
Look up. Look down. Look up. Look down. Look up. And down. Look up. And what we're working on here, guys, uh, the train track muscles, the iliocostalis, some of the spinalis, and some of the cervical extensors, just helping to get some blood moving, helping to iron out or loosen up some of the cervical spine musculature, come back to neutral forming, good. All right, and then we're gonna switch gears, Brie, and we're gonna work back on this right shoulder down to the track. And then here's the deal, my man. You can feel, obviously, this nodule back here, mm -hmm. and then we travel around to the side of the neck. And do you feel that thing right there? Yeah. Lean to the right, lean to the left. Lean to the right. 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 Lean to the left. Lean right. Lean left. We're gonna go up. Lean right. Lean left. Lean right. Lean left. Lean right. What do your workouts consist of every day? Um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we do some uh, circuit work with, um, I'm gonna say relatively light to moderate weights, uh, different body parts. Uh, we do eight station circuit, typically four times. We usually go like 50 seconds on, nice. 15, 20 seconds off. And then Tuesday, Thursday, uh, we do some stationary biking with some different um, online uh, apps that uh, yep. are through different things. So uh, then I try to do also just some extra just push-ups and stretching and, and some ab work. Nice. Too. So just a... Interval training, right? Yeah. 50 seconds on, 15 seconds off. Yeah. Get your heart rate up pretty good. Yeah, yeah some of them we, we actually mix that up pretty well with some different uh, light weights and then some uh, cardio stuff too. Yep. Best kind of training is interval training. So heart rate up, down, up, down. Quick fast burst for anywhere from like 30 to 50 seconds and then a little rest for maybe 10 to 30 seconds is really awesome to do. And like you did, if you got eight stations, four sets through, that's like 32 rounds of the exercise mm -hmm. uh, or of the group of exercises. It gets you a killer workout. Different kind of, there's all kinds of different different exercise, whether you're doing you know, more bodybuilding, which is like do a set, take a break, do a set, take a break. Uh, a lot of guys are working on getting their weights up. So lower reps, higher weight. But if we want to build a good, strong heart and a good, strong uh, cardiovascular system or circulatory system, we want to get that heart rate up fast, 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 fast. And the way to do that is with interval training, like Cam was just talking about. Uh, you know, 50 seconds on, 20 seconds off, or 50 seconds on, 15 seconds off, where you can just take a quick break, catch your breath, let your heart rate slow down a little bit and then get right back into the exercise. It builds lean muscle, it burns fat, it keeps you at a nice ideal body weight when you pair it with, you know, healthy food choices sometimes. Yeah, mostly. I'm trying. Most of the time? Yeah. All right, good to hear. I used to be really, uh, like, pressuring with, you got to eat the right way all the time. I personally went a little bit into the deep end where I, I didn't consume any bread for uh, like two and a half years, not one piece of bread. And I lost a bunch of weight. I used to weigh 220 if you would believe that. Now I'm down to about like 168, 170. Uh, my pant size has shrunk, my shirts have shrunk. I used to fill out a large, you know, I like a kind of like a, a medium large or a schmedium sometimes if you would say. But, uh, I feel way better, my body's healthier, I'm lighter on my feet, my cardiovascular system's way improved. And that's how we do it, high intensity interval training. But also good, right, as Ken said, mixing a day of car just cardio, whether it's a, a jog, a walk, a run, you know, where you kind of can try to keep your heart rate at a consistent pace. So if you're running a marathon, or a 5K or a one mile, you know, it's okay to just, you know, keep the heart rate a nice consistent elevation, whether it's 120 or 
you know, 110 or 130 beats per minute and just get, just get your heart pumping. But important to mix in other days of more cardiovascular intense exercise where we spike the heart rate up to 140, 150, 160 beats and then back down to resting is good. Let's go face down. You know. All right, guys, one of the things I check as a chiropractor is our internal rotation of the legs. You've seen me do this with other patients, but we like to feel how the left heel turns outward versus the right heel. And Ken, can you tell how this left leg feels? Mm -hmm. Versus this side is a little stiffer. Yep, exactly. Can you, can you tell that, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so when we check his knee flexion, and we always now, we try to kind of go to five, right? So we're gonna go toes in, heels out, which really helps us to access a lot of the quad uh, musculature as well as the toe extensors and these guys. I'm gonna go light on Ken's toes because he's got some stiff, stiff feet. And one of the things we've talked about in previous appointments with him is uh, working on his toe flexion and his uh, stretch for his extensor tendons, which are the guys on the top side of the foot. Go ahead, push into my hand here, Ken, and stop. Push, stop, push, and stop. And our goal with all of our patients, no matter your age, push, stop. I don't care if you're 20 or you're 50 or 70, push, stop. Because we do currently have some 70 year old patients that can easily get their heel to their butt, push. One lady is 77, she walks every day, push. She also likes to stay active. She's got a couple grandkids now. Push and stop whole way down now. And you guys can see with Ken where we started versus where we finished. Push and stop. And I will tell Ken, if he maintains this flexibility throughout life, he's gonna have very minimal, if any at all, knee problems. But we can see the difference in the right side. And this is your surgery side? Yes. Yes. For what injury again? Uh, ACL and then meniscus and then... Um, Push. MRSA. MRSA, that's right, I remember that story. Push. Stop. Whole way down. Push. Stop. Push. Stop. Push. And stop and push and stop. Relax right there for me. You can feel when I torque your heel a little bit here how it's definitely a little tighter oh, yeah. on the left side, right? Mm -hmm. Push for me. So guys, when we talk about spine imbalance and low back pain, push and stop. Or hip pain, push. You guys could see on the left leg how easy we could get his left heel up to his butt. One more time, push and now stop whole way down. And here on the right side, we do have underlying injury, uh, previous surgery to the right side. So we do have fibrosis and scar tissue from surgery and injury to the ACL. Uh, you said the meniscus as well. Mm -hmm. How many years ago was that? Oh, about 25. 25 years ago. Yeah. But guess what he didn't do? He didn't let his knee injury stop him from doing activity. That's the important takeaway from this. He kept going. You keep getting moving. You keep moving throughout the day. Uh, for Ken, we're gonna recommend that he starts to work on his rocker position, his go-to rocker position, so that he can gradually balance out his knee flexion, left side versus right side, which is ultimately gonna help reduce torque and twisting up in the spine, which can create you know, disc degeneration, low back pain, arthritis in the low back. Movement is the thing that heals. We say movement is medicine. Can you feel that in my right hip? Yes, he says he can feel this in his right hip. Which it, this is a common area where we get a little Little tendonitis, little tension up in the glute, up in the lateral, what's called the glute medius, glute minimus, the iliotibial band. This is one of the top areas, uh, obviously up in the neck and the shoulders where we use the hypervolt at as well. Uh, but this is one of my favorite areas to just, you know, kind of blast patients out and get their, uh, get a little circulation down here, 
get a little stimulation into the sacrum, the SI joint. You can kind of feel this movement the whole way down through your pelvis, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The hypervolt stimulates uh, through vibration, it stimulates the muscles, the connective tissue, the bones, the ligaments, and the joints, and it provides a nice healing effect to tightness. And if we get tightness, we get immobility, we can get arthritis, and we definitely get pain. So keeping the joints healthy, free, and mobile is important. Ken's doing that outside the office with daily exercise, whether it's biking, lunging, and squatting, right? Yep. Yep, a, a number of different activities with different body positions, working on improving his foot posture and his stance so that his stance is balanced, his feet are strong, and all of those little movements down in the lower extremity help create healthy upper body movement. your shirt up okay I'm gonna get into a little myofascial release up those train track muscles the train track muscles down here are called the ILS the iliocostalis the longissimus and the spinalis muscles Myofascial release helps do a number of things. So if you've, uh, if you guys on YouTube have ever been to a massage therapist or a chiropractor or a physical therapist that does any kind of muscle work, deep tissue work allows us to feel, feel that guy right through there a little bit. There's a little bit of knotted up tension, a little bit of knotted up tissue right through here. And I like to really kind of just get my, the tips of my knuckles down into those tender spots and help flush out any old lymphatic congestion, uh, muscle congestion, or circulatory congestion where we get kind of like static spots, spots where things tighten up and blood just doesn't flow as well. So you guys will see a little bit of red reaction come out of the back, out of the skin, excuse me, the skin on the back. Common after you have this stuff done to maybe feel a little sore throughout some of the tender regions and some of the knotted up regions. Is this tender at all or not really? It's not really. Not no. really, nice. back down all right so let's get into the thoracic adjustment just relax your shoulders down for me good take deep inhale through your nose exhale out whole way down for me and we're gonna go right here breath in for me exhale out and down for me nice deep inhale deep exhale whole way down good breath in and exhale out whole way down all right good work my man all right, now we're gonna move up and see if we can get a little bit of CT junction. You're gonna turn your head this way, just like that. And we're gonna go easy here. And one more there. Now right back to center. And then over this way, like this right here. Good, back to center. Okay, so he's a little stiff in his CT junction, which is okay. Face over to the right side up. Here, here. Deep inhale, deep exhale, whole way down. Good, good, other side for me. All right, now today we already know a couple exercises we're gonna talk about with Ken to get him next month or six weeks from now when he comes back in here, breath in, exhale out, whole way down, relax the supper. Down. Good, flatten your back for me. Okay, so 
One thing Ken's going to start working on. Let's do his feet first here. Good, good. That's your stiff one right there. Good. And then over here. Uh, we talked about foot squeezes last time a little yes, bit. Yeah. Working these guys. Yes. A little bit. Okay. So one of the things we like to work on is improving the plantar flexion, the downward, the downward point of the feet, the stretch of the lateral leg muscles, the stretch of the tendons on the side of the ankle. And Ken is going to work on some foot squeezes where he points his feet down and he squeezes his toes down on the left foot strongly for 10 seconds. And you may get a cramp and then right side. And what we want to do up in the brain, guys, is re reawaken the brain's control of the foot flexors, the plantar flexors, the intrinsic foot muscles. When we walk duck footed for a long period of time, it's common to have shin splints, tendonitis and tightness on the top of the foot, which can cause your toes to go hammer toes or bunions with the big toes. And so one of our rehab exercises that we tell all of our patients to do is foot squeezes down and in to stimulate and strengthen the plantar fascia. Oh, you okay? Yeah, tell them that's right here, the lover. All right, one more here. Good, okay. Keep working the foot squeezes, okay? Okay. All right, knee up. And now you guys can see how Ken, let, let's actually see if we get some good improvement here today. You feel all that stops right there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe a little jean tightness, but maybe a little hip tightness as well, right? Yeah, hip, yes, definitely hip, yeah. You feel it in the hip, deep mm -hmm. in the front of the hip? Okay. This side, move your hands up. See how easy this side feels here? Mm-hmm, yeah. Less pain in the front of the hip? Right. So this is okay. This is where we start to get a little tension. Feel the tension here? Mm-hmm. This is good. Bend up here. And this is just not as good, right? right. It's definitely stiffer, okay? So Ken likes to work out. Bend your knees up. Ken's gonna start to work on some bridges at home for us. We're gonna place your feet nice and narrow. And I want you to raise your butt up off the table. Awesome. You're gonna hold right here for maybe 20-ish seconds, okay? Okay. 20, 19, 20. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 2, 2, Step two, press through your left foot a little stronger and try to focus on bearing your weight in your left leg. And now press through your right foot a little harder and bear the weight on your right side. You're going to feel how the right side's weaker. And now left side. And now right side. I can feel like hamstring cramping a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Now, don't push it as hard as uh, what's going to cause it to cramp. Okay. Push left. Feel how strong your left leg is right here. Mm -hmm. Feel how tense this muscle is. Now, right side. Feel how this side is a little softer. It's not as engaged. Right. The muscle's soft. Now, left side. Feel how strong this left hand is here. Mm -hmm. Feel up in your brain how neurologically connected, how brain connected you are to your left hamstring. And now, push through the right foot. And see how this side needs work. Can you tell that? Yeah. All right. Take a break for just five seconds. We're gonna reset the feet, toes in a little bit. Knees open four to six inches. Butt raises up off the table. And now we're gonna practice a little scoop under with the pelvis. So what I want you to do, lower down an inch. Try to scoop your butt under. Like, watch me. It's gonna be like, you're gonna to try to tuck under like this. Okay. Kind of like almost a dog tucks his tail. Okay. okay. You're gonna press through your left foot. Five, four, three, two, one. Press to your right foot. Five, four, three, two, one. Press to your left foot. Five, four, three, two, one. Press to your right foot. Five, four, three, two, one. See how that feels? There? Yeah. Okay. You're gonna work this right leg for me. Okay. Okay. Take a breath. Now let's see what happens. Straighten this leg down. Bend this leg up. Oh, that's a little easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little bit of spring left in the step. Left leg up. 
and that side is much easier. See the difference here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So one of the things we do with our bridge guys, we activate the posterior chain, we make you more back chain dominant. That helps to reduce hip impingement, so as tendonitis and stuff up in the front of the hip. I want you at home, maybe you can do this after the workout when you finish up, mm -hmm. do a little rehab where you just lay flat on your back, bend your feet up to about here-ish, toes in, knees open a little bit, and then just butt raise up. Press through your left foot for five, four, three, two, one. Press through your right foot. Five, four, three, two, one. Left foot up. Good. Right foot presses, right hip raises a little bit. Nice. Left foot. And now right foot. Okay, and that's gonna be your exercise. You're gonna practice your brain shift from the left extremity to the right extremity, okay? Okay. You'll feel uh, maybe some cramping in the right hamstring. You'll definitely feel how the right side is a little more straining. It's a little more straining. And that's gonna be a simple exercise. You wanna practice that for about five minutes. Okay. okay. Whether you need to take a break after a minute or a minute and a half, but if you can stay up for five minutes, just kind of like. I'm doing that, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Stay down there for you. And then we are gonna do, there we go with the wrist. We are gonna do a little arm elbow treatment as well, but let's see if this guy moves here first. Not yet, he is stiffened up. Is this the surgery? Or left uh, side? Yeah, the left yeah. side, yeah. So we're gonna do a little work on the right elbow as well today. And guys, we just do little finger adjustments to help loosen the joints up in the hand a bit. And let's go both hands here. Let's do the neck adjustment first. We're gonna do this right first. Easy here, nice. Easy here, turn to the right a little bit. Right there, relax your neck now, nice. Okay, good work, man. Yeah. All right, guys, now what we're gonna do is a little bit of myofascial release, a little bit of instrument work, utilizing, uh, this is a rock blade through the Rock Tape Company. This is one of our fascial tools that we like to utilize. And uh, Ken had elbow surgery from a dislocation. Yes. Yeah. yeah. A while back, so he's definitely got some, ex you know, some additional or excessive bone growth from the injury year or years ago. And uh, that's common when you, you know, when you have an injury plus surgery, calcium can deposit, joint mobility can become decreased or reduced. And fascial treatment like this really helps to improve the circulation into the muscles. It helps us to stretch and iron out some of the tight spots down through the wrist and the forearm. It's gonna allow him to externally rotate. You see how, how I have his arm kind of torqued out or twisted out a little bit here? Oh, there goes a wrist oh. adjustment. You um, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Does that feel all right? Yep. Yeah. So when we put the arm in this position, guys, and then just think shoulder down like that. You may feel your deltoid in the back activate a little bit as you kind of twist open. And then back to center. And then we're gonna go right through here. And we get a lot of congestion, a lot of tendonitis, a lot of uh, what's called tenosynovitis which is just irritation uh, and general tightness of the connective tissue that wraps around the bones, around the, uh, the tendons and the muscles in the arm. Tenosynovitis or fasciitis, different terms for sticky tissue. All right, take a rest right there for me. do the, the top side. And now guys, we're hitting the extensor compartment. The extensor compartment 
and sometimes where we can get you know lateral epicondylitis where we get an accumulation of stress tension and inflammation right here at the outside of the elbow now we're doing this more as a treatment for ken's elbow just to get some circulation down into the elbow joint improve some of the vascularity and just get some healthy new new fluid into this elbow clean off and we're going to do the right arm for a minute. And same thing, we're doing a general arm treatment so we're not really focused on one specific area of pain, irritation, or inflammation, but we're really treating the full uh, forearm compartment or the medial compartment where the forearm flexors are at. You have your common flexor tendon, which attaches to the medial epicondyle here. And these are the muscles that help you grip and curl your fingers. How's it feel? Good. Pretty yeah. good, right? Mm -hmm. It's a little soothing and it, you can feel how we're kind of finding just a few, you had a little surgery right here too. Yeah. Some people have scars and cuts all over. This guy told you he's a D1 athlete, and he went, he went hard, huh? Yeah. Yeah, all right, good stuff. Lots of stuff to teach the new grandbaby, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Little girl, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, it's okay. They can wrestle, play football, they can That's do whatever right. they want these days. Taylor, our little girl, she she just like she loves everything. I'll have to show you her art picture when she when she does. We got her an easel, like, you know, like a chalkboard and a painting board or whatever. And uh, she likes to put her sunglasses on. She likes to wear a necklace and look very eclectic, like an artist would. You know, I'll show you guys her picture after we're done here. All right, good. Relax for me. And then we're gonna do the top side. Rest right there. Now she's a talker, she talks a ton. I'm trying to get the shyness out of her though, you know? <laughs> Sometimes she's kind of timid, she likes to sing now. And she's been watching Frozen a bunch, so she says, let it go, let it go. <laughs> and I say, stand up taller and scream louder. And then she goes, let it go. <laughs> so we gotta find our voice. There we go. Nice, all right, relax for me, cool. All right, man, good work, good work, good work. Hands right here. Let's just see if we can get the thoracic spine a little bit better. Cross your arms high up over your chest. Guys, one of the adjustments we'll do is an anterior thoracic adjustment. Ken's gonna take deep breath in, exhale it out, lay back, lay back, lay back. Good, deep inhale. Exhale, lay back. Good. Deep inhale. Exhale, lay back. All right, man. Good work. Spin over here to the right side. So the anterior uh, spinal adjustment that way, the supine version of it, sometimes a little easier for patients to get them back into more extension. And Ken did great today, man. Great neck adjustment. Relax the shoulder. And now left side. Good. Okay, scooch forward on the table for me. Hands back and down, palms in, right here. Head up, chest up, shoulders open. When Ken's watching TV or uh, still going to some sporting events too, right man? Yes. All right, maybe we're sitting on the, on the bleachers or the sideline or whatever. Every now and then we wanna prop the spine up. We wanna push the hands down. We wanna pinch the shoulder blades back. We wanna feel how we create this nice extension and nice back muscle activation, right? Step two, add a little coil or a twist. Left hand pushes, left shoulder pulls back. And then right hand pushes, right shoulder pulls back. This is your tougher side. Mm -hmm. This is the side that I want you to really focus on and work. First, the left side, which is a little easier up in the lat, right? Your lat's a little more active, your neck's a little softer. Versus the right side, which is a little, little bit, just a little bit tougher to rotate to. Can you tell how that's yeah. a little different? Right. So we're torsioning and twisting the spine nicely. Left rotate and right rotate. And you'll do this about 10 reps. One rep on the left and then one rep on the right. This is a nice little exercise to help him just rotate a little bit better. 
good shoulder blade back like that yeah. and then left side shoulder blade back like that perfect back to center now if we can release these put them a little further back and we're going to kind of pull them in a little bit and then think chest through the shoulders like that I feel that's just a little more challenging mm -hmm. when we get a little yeah. further back and this is the same thing double shoulders open when we do this exercise guys we're helping to up in his brain find his triceps and utilize his lats more efficiently so we can get more power out of the scapula, more power out of the mid back with less neck tension. We wanna see that the neck muscles stay nice and soft. You can add in a neck stretch to the right and do this for about 30 seconds to just kind of feel this nice stretch through the neck and then go to the left and feel how this right side's way tighter. See the difference there? Mm -hmm. So we know, we know Ken has uh, some kind of old neck injury, whether it was a bad sprain, it could have been a car accident, a slip and a fall, one more time to the right. He can laterally flex about 50% further on the right, uh, over to the right side than he can over to the left side. So this is gonna be his side that he focuses on throughout the day. Every hour, taking a real quick stretch break for a minute or two minutes and helping to just open the shoulder up. One more thing, lean to the left and now gently roll it, yes, like this. Keep this guy rolled back a little bit. I feel that really kind of pulls oh, yeah. and stretches down the whole way down to the arm, the wrist, the forearm. Okay? Yeah. Cool? All right, good treatment today. We're going to do one more exercise I want you guys to watch. Let's stand up tall for me, and we're going to go right here in our uh, in our little rocker position. What you do at home this, this month, this could be your couch or it could be an auto. Toes are in, heels are out. Can you sit back slowly? Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. Yeah, can, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Now, what you're gonna do, if you need to, you can put your forearms up here. And what I want you to do, think head up, chest up. And now, tilt your butt back. Not that way, the other way. There you go, like that. Okay. See how that feels? Okay. Pull your chest through your shoulders, Jim. So pull forward like this. There you go. Feel how that loads your back chain, mm -hmm. right? It really, don't hold your breath, take deep breath in. Exhale out, just let your chest sink down into it and feel how much extension. We're creating this like nice muscle activation through the mid-back here. See how it feels? Mm -hmm. What I would do, turn the TV on in the living room, if you have an ottoman or something, Kitchen. just rest a little bit here. And then what you're gonna do, when you when need a break, just come out of it. And now when you come out of it, still keep the hips tilted back a little bit. Okay. So butt back and then chest up. So practice that long, strong spine. Okay. We'll say tilt extension. the hips back, yes, extension like that. Okay. Sit back into it a little bit. Tilt the hips back, back with the butt. There you go, like that. See how that feels? Yeah. Like? That's your tougher position. Mm -hmm. So he's, it, guys on the video, you see how he wants to wink under? Yeah. We need to build this extension pattern. We need to build up his back muscle extension. Come up out of it, put the hands down on the ottoman. Think hips back, shoulders back. So tilt your butt back, back like this, good. And now pull the chest forward and just kind of rest right here for a little bit. Take deep inhale. As you exhale, think arch back, back, back with the spine. Feel how much back muscle activation we're getting mm -hmm. right through here. Yeah. And now just take a rest and down into it. Okay. Now what we want to see Ken do, let's just relax everything, try to sit the whole way down. What we want to see Ken do over the next uh, you know, three months, really, if you practice 10 minutes of this two to three times a week, your knee flexibility is going to improve drastically. Move your knees in a little closer. Your floor at home is going to be a little less uh, hard. Your carpet yeah. will be a little easier. Okay, and I want you to shift your hips over to your left foot, and then just gently shift your hips gently over to the right foot. Okay, yeah. if you can just bounce up and down a little bit, you'll feel how this really stretches mm -hmm. the knee, the quad, and then even down into the tops of the ankles. Over to the left side now, and if you can, you know, put all your weight down in your left heel and then gently over to the right side. And guys, this is a great lubrication exercise. We'll say lubrication, it greases your joints, it stretches your connective tissue, it gets you comfortable into what, into what we call the Seiza position, which is like your childhood sitting position. Uh, this is part of the go to coaching protocol, which is your four point rocker. Ken's doing it right now as a six point rocker where we're doing a little bit of assisted with the hands. Yeah. And what we wanna do, Ken, is just kinda of gradually sit back on the right foot, Sit back on the left foot. Now don't, yeah, take it nice and easy, okay? Guys, as you do this at home, the more that we do it, the more we develop the ability to cut left and cut right. The knees get healthier, but it's gonna take time to rebuild some of the cartilage and the top of the foot is so 
yeah. so, super sore, right? Yeah. Now that's also, remember we talked about toes down and in yeah. squeezes. So both these exercises complement each other very well. It allows us to get stronger feet, stronger calves, stronger hamstrings, and then longer front chain, longer front chain. So we want the front chain to get nice and long. We want the back chain to get nice and strong. The back chain is our back muscles, our hamstrings, our glutes. Is that cool? Yeah. Come up out of it if you need to rest on your elbows. When you rest on your elbows, think tilt your hips back. There you go. And then think head up, chest up. So if you can just watch a little bit of TV here, or you can even get your cell phone or a book and do some reading down here on the on the table for a little bit. I know it's kind of a weird position, yeah. but it is really going to help you to improve that right uh, that right knee and the right hip health and the right lower back. Now, let's add in one more key point. Let's sway or swivel over to the right outside foot. Hold it. Try to, again, tilt your hips back. Well, tell you that, nice and easy. Do you feel how tight up in the, yeah. in the butt cheek or where? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then over to this left side. So now, guys, we're getting into what we call cornering. And cornering is rotation left and then rotation right. And I'm just checking to make sure that his feet are staying, toes in, heels out. Tilt your hips back further. There you go. Oh, feel how tight in yeah. there? All right, back to the left side. This side should feel a little easier. You're also going to notice how you put more pressure on your left knee, left leg here. Mm -hmm. And then verse over on the right side. Really think, push the right leg down into the ground and sit back into that right glute like that. Good. And that's going to stretch and reduce all this tension. So much tension up in this right hip, right low back that he's working on right now. Good. Oh. Yeah. So double foot squeeze. Yeah, yeah. yeah, palms down and back when you sit a little bit, and then let's let's add in some of the rocker position this next four weeks. If you can do this five minutes every day, minimum, if you can do 10 or 15 minutes, you're gonna see over a short period of time how much more mobility your left hip and your right hip have. Yeah. I think from the surgeries, the, the right quad is, and, and hip flexor are just, Way tight, tight. tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the left leg, we can see how easy it gets mm -hmm. in the flexion, and the right leg is definitely our worst side. Yeah. So guys, what our progression is, you see how I kind of transitioned out of the, the four, the six point rocker, and then we transition into a nice three point sit. Our three point sit is where we keep foot in line with the femur, and we want to get comfortable just kind of resting down here, maintaining and staying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so he's going to work on this. Easy, easy. You want to be foot straight with femur. And this comes back to getting more outside foot pressure, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now you can also rest this in. Use this elbow to just push this knee up. Yeah, feel how tight this mm -hmm. like inner groin yeah. is right here. So we want to balance out the pelvis all the time. We want to get the leg muscles, the hip muscles, and you know, you know, basically everything in the lower extremity nice and strong and flexible, so that it becomes easy for us to sit in our back chain in our three-point sit. And then we transition, we practice the same thing over to the opposite side. And we just kind of, you know, in the living room, if you got kids, you're playing with the kids on the living room floor, make fitness part of your daily routine. Yeah, nice and yeah. easy. Okay, yeah. take that side slow. Yeah, this guy, he wants to work. He wants to work, which is good to see. Now, the only thing that you're going to really work on, you see how your knee's out and your foot's out. Yeah. Okay, so ultimately we want to be parallel, oh, parallel in line. Okay, and that's how you're gonna to start today to reshape and rebalance your hip muscles out and develop more flexibility so that, how old are we now? I'll oh, be 59 next week. All right, so, so when we're 60, when we're 60, he can't do this at 59, when we're 60, you gonna to commit to this? Yeah. All right, he's gonna to commit to it, he's gonna, at 60 years old, you're gonna see this guy sitting comfortably down into his three-point sit position, which is gonna be so wonderful for his knees and hips. 59 years old, it doesn't matter what your age is. We see 12-year-olds that can't even do this exercise in the office, and we'll teach them. Hey, you guys play video games at home? Sit in your three-point sit. Now we gotta coach the kids, and we coach the adults to get into these body positions that strain and stress our tissues, and it, but ultimately help us to develop healthier skeleton, healthier muscular system, and pain reduction, injury reduction, optimize your performance. See you later. Thank you. Thanks, man. Good.